I'm happy to be joined once again by Devin Powell, this time as he prepares to make his Bellator debut this Saturday at the Mohegan Sun against Marcus Surin. Devin, how are you? Great, what's up? Good, man. Always a pleasure to talk to you. It's been a while since you stepped in the cage last. You know, unfortunately, you did drop your, your last fight for the UFC, but now you're in the Bellator promotion. Did you feel like this was just a, a natural transition for you, or were you hoping to really stay in the UFC? Um, I really, uh, I didn't really have much thought kind of with anything. I just was kind of taking it day by day. I went through a lot with the UFC where it was kind of hard to tell what what was going to happen with me if I was going to fight. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a mess, but you know, it is what it is. And I, uh, I was really excited after my last fight when I started talking to Bellator um, about the idea of, of fighting for them when I didn't even know if it was possible, um, whether or not I'd be with the UFC still, we kind of just fought, um, stayed quiet. And then um, you know, a bunch of things transpired and then it was, it was easy to make a, a smooth transition over. What's your uh, contractual situation right now with Bellator? Are you on a fight-to-fight -fight basis, or did you sign a three- or four-fight deal? I just signed one fight, um, so I'm completely free. I can do whatever I want. Um, you know, if things go well, I would love the idea of uh, maybe uh, being considered for the tournament if they do a lightweight one. But, um, but yeah, I, I really don't have uh, much going on in my head aside from just getting, getting my hand raised and, and getting the job done and proving I'm, I'm worthy and just that I can compete against the guys that are the best in the world still. I'd like to ask you a little bit about the win that you had in the UFC over uh, Alvaro Herrera. Uh, I was watching intently, obviously rooting for you, being a New England guy here, knowing you as well. Uh, try and put into words how how much that knockout in the first round, what that meant to you. And, and is there something you can compare it to from what you have accomplished in your career? Um, no, I mean, there's, there really isn't anything that is like that, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you want so badly for all the stars to align. Um, I'd gone through some injuries. I was told that they couldn't find me a fight. I called Sean Shelby and, and begged for another opportunity to prove that I could, I could beat those guys. And, uh, 13 months after, um, you know, my second fight, I, I got a, uh, I got an opportunity. I had 30 days to prepare. Um, and getting it done, you know, in Canada, uh, was, it was amazing. There's, there's nothing that like, there's no way to, to describe it. There's, there's no higher high and there's also no lower low than losing inside that cage. Um, you put everything into every single one of these fight camps. Um, it's, I don't, I don't go home and, and say, oh man, I should have done this or that. It's like, and we did everything. We did everything right to try and be ready for this fight. And then sometimes injuries happen. Sometimes you just don't fire on all cylinders. You know, maybe the travel, like going to Argentina, you know, you didn't feel great. But, like, you know, you, you do everything leading up to it the best you can. You can't prevent getting injured during fight camps. You can't prevent getting injured during fights. You know, getting eye injuries like my last fight, being half blind, you know, it's it's really hard to control anything. So when you lose and you know that you're good enough to compete with those guys, it, it's, you know, it's heartbreaking. So having that opportunity to, to prove myself, um, that was the biggest thing in the world for me. And now it's like, I did it and, you know, it was amazing and the UFC is incredible, but this is just a new chapter. You know, uh, I, I wanted a, another opportunity to fight for one of the world's biggest promotions and, and have an, a new, uh, you know, a new look and, and a new start. Uh, I'm very happy to see you uh, have another fight booked, especially here in New England. I remember one of the last times I spoke with you, uh, me and Brian Stackpole, we were down at the Coliseum in Lewiston for an NEF event, and you were actually talking about maybe retiring and just going into coaching full time. Just tell me a little bit about where's your head at right now. Do you feel like that's just something where maybe you were in a, you were in a bad space at the time, and right now you're more focused on fighting and uh, and maybe stringing together a, a few more wins? I mean, I'm always entirely invested in, in my camps whenever I'm in them. Uh, and when I'm not in camp, I mean, it, it's been almost a year, but I've been training six days a week leading up to this moment, you know. And then when I get a, a fight scheduled, it's just we're all in and, and things have to change. I get a few more classes covered. Um, I travel a little bit more down to Joe's uh, gym. and But 
this whole time I've been going down to skill strength every week to do my strength and conditioning, which is like an hour and a half away or so. And then um, every Monday I was still going to Joe's to, to train. Now it's just adding in some sparring days here and there on Saturdays. So I'm always training like a fighter. I train harder than I think anybody that's getting ready for fights, even when I'm not um, in a fight camp. Uh, but it's just, I don't want to do it too long and, and have um, issues that, you know, that I won't be able to, to overcome and, and not be able to like, you know, stand during my daughter's graduation and like all this stuff. It's really, if I don't feel like I can compete with the, the best in the world, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to fight anymore. I have my gym. It's, I don't need a fight because the money that I make fighting, I'd make more money if I just continued to invest all my time in my gym and grow my student base, you know, um, to an extent, you know, obviously some big fights, big bonuses, those are amazing, but no, no way will I go and fight locally and, and, and uh, sacrifice all that time for my gym and my students and stuff. Um, they, they're all excited for me and they understand. And I'm still there six days a week, even with me training to Massachusetts two, two or three times a week. But um, it's just, I don't, uh, I don't see the excitement in trying to fight in these, in the small shows now, you know, I did that and I, I can't wait to watch my guys go from that and then go to where I was and then go even further with it. But I don't really want to take any back steps. You gotcha. know, I said till the, till the wheels fall off and that's how I always feel. You know, it's like when the wheels fall off, that means I'm not, uh, I'm not able to compete with those guys. And all my losses in the UFC were decisions. You know, I just, I didn't compete the way I wanted to. Um, it is what it is, but I never felt like, man, I shouldn't be here. It's just like, oh, it just wasn't my night. But I never got subbed. I never got finished. Never even got hurt in a single one of my fights. I mean, I, I broke my eyes off getting my first fight. But it wasn't like, I you know, I got hurt and I got dropped or something. It was just like, all right, I, I, I got cut. I know that, whatever. Um, my fight in Argentina, uh, something hit me. I don't know what it was in the beginning of the second round. And then everything just went dark yellow in my eye and I, I couldn't see anything until um, right before I left the hospital that night. So I was just partially blinded. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't like I got rocked and I got dropped, never been knocked down, never been hurt. It's just, uh, just not my night a couple of times. I know that I can still compete with those guys. It's even more uh, of a confirmation of that idea. Whenever I go down to Joe's and I train with some of the best guys in the world that are all in new England, you know, Joe knows that I'm, I'm good enough to compete. He wouldn't be willing to go to Argentina to corner me or um, or come out to, to Mohegan and all these things. He came to Calgary. Like, you know, he believes me. He knows I work hard. Um, if if they thought that it was time for me to, to hang it up, then they would, they would be straight up, you know. It's okay mm -hmm. to be blunt. It's not a sport that you need to stay in too long for, you know. Now, it's funny, I actually heard Dana White uh, in a uh, press conference just the other day talking about uh, Joe Lozon saying that win, lose, or draw this last uh, for him in Boston, he told him he wanted him to retire. Now, yeah. when you look at someone like Joe that's accomplished as much as he has, and he's like a legend here in the New England area, but he never cracked that you know top five in the in the weight class to, to challenge for you know a, a title. D do you feel like if you were in his shoes right now, you could say to yourself, um, I've done enough, it's time to hang it up and retire, or he's still beating some of these guys. Do you think he still wants to, you know, get in there and, and fight for a while longer? Is that something that, that, you know, you would do? And then, you know, what is he thinking right now, even though Dana wants him to hang it up? So he, he showed me the, the text directly from Dana, which I won't disclose exactly, but he was definitely, I don't, I don't know, fabricating it's too extreme, but it wasn't like, it, it was a lot less extreme than that you know joe joe didn't do anything wrong by not retiring in there um he didn't go against what he had said to dana um i think dana just really wanted to see him call it quits because it seems like dana really is pretty serious about i mean he makes enough money i think he he does truly care about the guys getting out at the right time um but joe's one of the most articulate and uh well-spoken people that you'd ever meet um it doesn't sound like he, you know, he has to, to call it quits right now. Um, but at the same time, he knows it and everybody else knows he has nothing to prove. That could have been the, by far the best way to ever close out a career. Um, it's good to close out on top um, and not off a loss. Um, but 
fighting and doing that well against this up up and coming prospect. I don't blame him for for kind of questioning whether or not it's the right time. Like he just in inside two minutes probably it was that he, he put that kid away. That that's like Dana White's new guy, you know, off yeah. the contender series and just smoked him. So he's just he's been in so many wars. It's just no matter what, if he goes and he fights again, it's there's going to be another night, whether it's a win or a loss, that he's going to take some hard shots. You know, he's going to get cut up again. Um, if only they could go all go that way is what Joe said, you know, but they don't. And Joe's a Joe's a scrapper through and through. So some of those fights are rough. Um, and that's why everybody loves him so much. But those are the kind of fights that like everybody would love to see him retire if he's going to go and get into a handful more of those because. We don't. Nobody wants to. As much as they're entertaining, if you care for the guy, you don't want to see that. If he yeah. could, if he could just, if we knew that he was going to go do the exact same thing again, say do it over and over. But there's no way to know how things are going to play out. Um, but he had a spectacular performance, you know, and he's got a very smart team and a very good gym, and they'll make all the right decisions. I know. So yeah. yeah. Very, very well said. And yeah, Joe's always been one of my favorites to watch. He really gets after it. Uh, he's one of those, he's a fighter's fighter. You know, he, he really goes after it and, and looks to finish fights, which a lot of people uh, in the UFC some, sometimes nowadays, you know, people look to win on points. That's not what, what Joe does. He goes in there and looks looks to finish. I'd like to talk a little bit about your team because you've had a lot of great fighters um, that you've been mentoring that are fighting here in the New England area. <laughs> Jake Bagley, uh, Zach Richard, just to name a couple. Talk a little bit about their evolution and, and what you think that their ceilings just may be here for their mixed martial arts careers. Yeah, I mean, they're uh, they're super tough, you know, and uh, toughness goes a long way, but I think they're both getting a lot more serious about being in the gym more often and uh, actually starting to, to focus more on being martial artists. Um, Jake had a little bit of a setback, um, and we're kind of just – waiting for him to get cleared. I think he's got a title fight that he rescheduled just because, you know, fight camp stuff, you just be, beat up a little bit too much to, to keep the fight he had. But um, but as far as Richard, you know, he's in the gym probably at, at least twice as often as he was his last several uh, fight camps, um, which is which is huge because he can always go in there and scrap and, and be tough and always rely on that wrestling. But now he's getting better at everything else. Um, he gives me great rounds, and he's fighting at 155 this fight, but he's, he doesn't feel weak for 55. He's not that much smaller than me, and I'm pretty big for 55. Um, I think that he's going to find his home at, at 45 and stay there soon, um, but he'll be fine at 55. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they, the guys are so young, and um, he, he does everything right. They both do. You know, they're big into the sponsorships. They're big into ad, uh, marketing themselves. But you got to do number yeah. one thing um, is win fights. And then after that, it's get a, you got to promote yourself. But if you keep winning, people will see you. You know, it's just, uh, yeah. Have you seen much on uh, Zach's opponent, Mike Murray? Because he really looks like he could be something special. A uh, uh, really good kickboxer, super athletic. I know he's very young, uh, just in, in form of years. But w what kind of a fight do you expect this to be if you have uh, watched some tape on uh, his opponent, Mike? Um, I, I think it's going to be a grappling match. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, we'll see, but I don't, I don't think, uh, either of them are going to keep standing once one of them gets hit. I think that, you know, I think Mike's going to get tagged and probably try and take down Richard. Um, or if Richard doesn't, uh, doesn't like what he's seeing on his feet, he'll do the same thing. But, um, yeah, Richard's, uh, He's got he's got some kickboxing now, you know. He's been working hard. I'm I'm excited to see him get his hands on someone. He keeps saying he's gonna do it, and he kind of reverts to his wrestling. But uh, this might be the one. I think I feel really confident about uh, about that aspect of it. Guys, I can't wait for that fight. The next NEF card is stacked, and uh, I know you know the NEF very well, being a former champion. I'm sure you'll be there uh, in Zach's corner there on fight night. Uh, now, that, that's your dog, but I was going to ask you about uh, come this Bellator fight. Uh, are you going to be bringing your pig down there with you? Uh, yeah, she'll be there. Um, I asked if we could walk her out, but I think I think you got to prove my worth first before I, I get her to walk out in the uh, – in the cage or out to the cage with me maybe the next fight if i you know if all goes well david rickles has some pretty
pretty elaborate walkout. So I would like to match that. My shirt's father, you know, it's pretty cool. It's got a picture of her and me together. That, that, that is very cool. And, and I'm sure, obviously, with all the interesting walkouts that Caveman has, you'll be able to uh, kind of figure out your own style uh, and have something interesting yourself, which will be really cool to, to look forward to. Um, now, as far as the actual fight night, it's on Saturday, but there's there's uh, two cards back to back, Friday night and Saturday night. Are you going to be there for the Friday night uh, event as well? Um, I'm going to be there. Uh, I just it, It'll just – we'll play it by ear. You know, the weight cuts really suck. We'll see how much I – how much I feel like being out um, after that, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, we'll just play it by ear. You know, it's I'm gonna fight later on in the night. Well, actually, not not too late, but late enough that uh, I can definitely sleep in. So I'd like to see it. I just don't like getting too excited and then uh, you know having it affect me the next day. But I don't have any teammates or anything fighting, so I can kind of enjoy them quietly. You know. And then, are, are, there any, uh, are there any fights on either card that really stand out to you that you're looking forward to, to watching? I mean, there are some legends on, on both of these cards, so it's going to be a really interesting uh, uh, weekend here at the Mohegan Sun. Um, I mean, the, uh, the Rory McDonald fight I'm super excited for, and then the other main event I'm super excited for. Um, I've also never seen Paul Daly fight, and that's pretty exciting. I definitely want to see that fight. Um, and you then know, as far as the other ones, man, I've been, I've been so focused and this is no different between UFC or Bellator. I'm so focused on my own thing. And I feel like there's so many fighters now that I know probably 30% of the guys that fight now, maybe even less for Bellator, to be honest, just because the network's a little weird. Um, I gotta figure that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are the ones that I know, and I know there's going to be some spectacular fights, you know? A lot of these guys are uh, are fighting for long term contracts, or you know they get nothing to lose. A lot of times, I mean, Bellator, in my opinion, uh, they might not agree, but I think it's true that sometimes they'll set up fights where they're really looking to see one person win, and you can kind of tell by the records they'll bring in guys a little bit more like a um, just like entertainment value. They'll bring in guys from like WWE or whatever, and they'll fight somebody that probably shouldn't be in there. Because they want to see him win. But some of the guys that are decent fighters that get like kind of mismatched, they're going to go for broke in there. So, like, they're just going to, you know, they're just going to, they're going to send it. <laughs> so, did you yeah. see that Paul Daly has a new opponent now? No, I didn't. I yeah, didn't know who his other opponent was either, though. Yeah, his other opponent, his name's mistaking, uh, it's escaping me right now, but Saad Awad has actually been brought in on short notice to take on uh, Paul Daly. So, that's going to be a really good fight. Yeah, he's been with the with Bellator for a while now, right? Yeah, you have seen him there. Yeah, and he had a really great uh, fight with Brandon Gertz uh, earlier this year. I don't know if you remember, but it's one of my fights of the year. So this is going to be really interesting. Saad always brings it. Now, as far as your your weight cut, you were saying that this week, you know, you still got a little bit of weight to to go to get there. How much uh, How much do you have? Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, weight cutting sucks, man. It's terrible. Um, I uh. Full disclosure, I finished my uh, my training session this morning, like a hot yoga class at uh, 166.8, which is just over 10 pounds over, um, you know, and then I hydrated up and, and had a small lunch and, you know, it sucks. It's part of the sport, sadly. I wish that somehow we could do the 1FC kind of thing um, and then I could fight at 170. And it's still, the crazy thing is it would still be hard for me to fight at 170. Because fully hydrated, if I actually had any food in my system, I'd be over 170. Wow. Um, but that, you know, we all do that. Um, look at this guy. What are you doing, climbing the attic ladder? <laughs> What's his name? Gunner. Gunner. That's awesome. Dogs are the best. You, you, you got quite a, uh, quite a family around you there between your, your, your wife, uh, your kid, and, and then your pig and your dog, man. It, what, what's a normal day like there for you? I mean, it just must be a, a lot of love regardless of, of what it is you're doing. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all over the place, but we wake up each morning, we go to the gym, we bring the dog and the pig, um, and then we usually hang out at the gym, do, uh, you know, clean, or sometimes we'll go back home for a few and then we're back to the gym five till nine. It's basically every night. Thursdays, we go to Skill of Strength. Um, and then we come home. And if it's not fight camp, we do it like a family night where me, my wife, and daughter just kind of pick something that we're going to do. 
um, during fight camp, I've been going into the gym Thursday nights and doing so I could do double sessions, um, you know, sacrificing a little bit extra time. But that's basically it. You know, Mondays I, I go to Lozons, which is two and a half hours away from us. And then we go straight back to the to our gym from five till nine. Um, and then Saturdays, uh, a couple times this camp, I've been going for sparring there um, and then coming back and taking it a little bit easier at night. Um, Sunday's been doing my sparring at home and then doing some hot Pilates to, to help burn some weight and get my core ready to take some shots. And um, yeah, we're, we're just everywhere, everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm sure I can speak for everyone here in New England saying we're excited to see you step back into the cage, uh, especially here in the New England area. Let's talk a little bit about your opponent, Marcus. What do you know about him, and what kind of a fight do you anticipate this to be stylistically? Stylistically, I think that his 100% his game plan is going to be to try and wrestle me. You know, he was a collegiate wrestler. He was the captain of his team um, his senior year. He's 6 and one Two and one in Bellator, four and zero, oh, I think, as an amateur. Um, but he's a wrestler through and through. His his striking's fine. It's just fundamental, but it's not like scary. You know, the last guy I fought, the Peruvian, this 22 year old kid with over 20 professional fights, almost all knockouts. And you watch his highlight. He's just walking in, putting people out cold. He'll throw some shots, but he's not really looking to. He's not throwing like he's trying to take somebody's head off. He's just trying to to punch and finally and find his way to, to clench and try and wrestle someone, you know, he's got, he's got his head and arm choke and, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what he's going to do. And I'm going to try and stifle that. Are you anticipating uh, maybe a long drawn out fight where you're stuffing takedowns, trying to keep it on the feet, or do you think you're, you will be able to catch him uh, and maybe finish him? I, I definitely think I can catch him and finish him. Um, and if, if he can, succeed to get me down um i don't think he's going to be able to hold me down very easily you know i know he wrestled but i trained with a lot of good wrestlers um young hungry kids that are uh, always trying to do that and uh yeah i don't think uh i don't think it's going to be that easy i'm a legit black belt in jiu-jitsu and um you know i get to, to roll with joe every week and and uh i think that he would put my jiu-jitsu against anybody so yeah. Now, I know you mentioned earlier, Devin, that uh, you hope that you could be in the mix if Bellator does decide to do a, a lightweight tournament. Uh, if that doesn't come to fruition here next, is there someone that's on the roster that, that you'd like to fight? I mean, you're coming from the UFC, so they're not going to give you some you know, guy that, that's, that's low on the totem pole. I would imagine they're going to give you someone that, that has some, some name cred here. Is there someone that, that makes sense for you? I know you're not looking past your, your opponent here this weekend, but anyone you have your eyes on? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't. I need to. I think I need to pay a little bit more attention. Um, even in the UFC, I never paid attention to like the guys in my division. I was always uh, wait for a call, um, and then tell them to send the contract, and then let's get let's get at it. You know, um, I really yeah. I I like to think that I'm a company man, and that's why the UFC did like me a lot. Um, you know, I everything they asked me, I got in right away. You know, I checked in when I was supposed to. I was where I was supposed to be when I was supposed to be there. I always did my USADA. Um, I never said no to a fight um, ever. And I've never pulled from a fight ever. And I've been, we've all been injured plenty of times going into fights. But, you know, I just try and, uh, you know, I take these opportunities and I don't want to take them for granted. So I, I just try and do everything to make their jobs easier because they have so many people to deal with. Um, so we, my management did want me to have an easy fight at first, but they didn't. They were like, no, we're not giving you an easy fight. We're giving you a hard fight. And they were like, well, do you want to do this or do you want to fight locally? I was like, I don't want to fight locally. You know, it's, it's this or, you know, we, we uh, call it quits because I'm, uh, I'm not stepping back. So we got this tough fight, and I don't think that after this they'll give me anything easier. So we'll just see, uh, see who's next. But right now it's 100% uh, focused on Marcus Stern. Well, and that is this weekend at the Mohegan Sun. I can't wait for that one, Devin. I'll be down there uh, actually covering the event, so I will see you there. And a uh, big shout out to your management team, Tyson Chartier and Top Game Management. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, buddy. Before I let you go, any sponsors that you have you'd like to thank or any social media? The floor is yours. Oh, man, I got a, I got a lot of uh, people that I can shout out. Um, I can shout them out real quick. I might disappear for a second if I can read them. That's fine. Okay. All right. 
Give me one sec. Let me see if I can do this. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so my sponsors, uh, obviously the, the teams I'm training with, Lozons and uh, Port City BJJ, my gym, No Stuffs MMA, and Skill of Strength. Um, Two Rivers Lunch, Sea uh, Dog, which is always awesome every time we go to Bangor, Tortuga Soap, uh, Chucky's Fight, Wade Landscaping, um, I think I might have already said Hard Body Meals, Coyote River Hemp Co., um, Libby's Oceanside Campground, A Perfect Move, Top Game Management, Charson, uh, Chase, Tyson Chartier, obviously, doing all this to, to keep me going, um, Sneakers Graphics, who um, made all my shirts and stuff, Skull and Snake Tattoo, um, Uncle Pete's Relief, The Juicery, Straight Jacket. It's been with me for a while. They're on all my mats and wall pads, and they're uh, they're an awesome group to work with. Smoke and Cream, which will be where they'll view uh, people will be viewing my party if it, uh, my fight if they can't be there in person. They'll be showing it right next to the gym at Smoke and Cream. Um, TK Tile, um, Battle Wounds Apparel, and uh, obviously thank Bellator. <laughs> For having me fight, I think that might have been it. If not, I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah your, your job in the sponsor area, my friend. That that is a long list. So congratulations uh, again. Always a pleasure to chat with you, man. And uh, I will see you this weekend down in Connecticut. Yeah, you got it. Oh, Phoebe, look at this punk. <laughs> up on furniture. All right, I'll see you soon.